Hi, I'm Matt Hill. I'm a curriculum designer here at MRU. This is the day six slides walkthrough. You know, with these videos, we're just trying to give you a sense of what we were thinking uh, with the with the slides. So here we are, last day. I'm going to be talking about all right, what happens to your wages, what happens to savings, what happens to borrowing and lending when there is um, inflation. And try to get students to understand, like, okay, am I taking a real pay cut or, you know, what's going on with my savings? Um, that is the idea with the slides. So we start with a wage bell ringer. So we're going to start with wages. And we're gonna, you ask the students, okay, you got a raise. Is it really a raise? Which may seem like a weird question. And maybe the students are like, what do you mean? Of course it's a raise. Um, but the idea is that to hopefully at this point in the in the unit, they are starting to think about inflation. So maybe, you know, they may maybe they say, well, it depends on inflation, which is, of course, the right answer. And then we go through a couple scenarios. And so in this scenario, you know, you're making twenty dollars an hour. Comic books cost twenty dollars an hour. And these are these these, by the way, are real comic books. These images right here. These are from a real comic book series that the Fed did. Um that I that I found online. Um, anyways, so if you're making twenty dollars an hour, you could buy you know one comic book, and if you get a five percent raise, now you're making twenty one dollars an hour. But with inflation, if inflation was ten percent, if inflation was more than your raise, well, then your purchasing purchasing power has actually decreased. You can no longer buy the comic book, and this is the difference between real and nominal wages. You can have a nominal wage increase; your wage can go up, the amount you get paid, but if inflation beats it your real wage has gone down and you're taking a real or you're taking a real pay cut because you can buy less. And so it's important for students to sort of understand this, like, okay, the, my wages should keep pace with inflation. So many, um, you know, many, many contracts have like a 2% automatic bump um, built into them. And here we're asking students to think, okay, what is better that 2% bump? Or if you just got a raise that kept pace with inflation and you want to show them this graph and in the student activity sheet they sort of have to pick out all right what years does that two percent bump beat inflation so you can see in most years inflation is actually larger than that and some years like here in 2009 a two percent raise would be better than a raise tied to um to inflation actually a lot of these years here as well okay so that's wages Takeaway there, remember, make sure your wages are keeping pace with inflation. When you go to bargain with your uh, your boss, say, hey, I need at least I need at least what uh, inflation is doing. Otherwise, I'm taking a pay cut this year. All right, on to savings. And again, the thought experiment that we're going to start with here, we're going to start with another thought experiment. Experiment. Um, all right, you put $100 um, in uh, in your drawer and each year a rat eats, you know, one of these hundred dollars. Is this a good place to keep your money? Of course not. You know, if you're asking your students, yeah, of course not. And by the way, we couldn't find a stock image, shockingly, of a rat uh, eating money. So this is generated uh, by one of those AI art uh, art things. And so this is what that this is what the, the robots think a uh, a rat eating a uh, eating a uh, uh, eating a dollar bill looks like. All right, so this is not a good place to save your money. But inflation is like this. So this is how inflation works as well. So if you just keep your money, like if you just keep your you know, $100 under your bed, um, every year it's going to be worth less as inflation goes up, as prices go up, that $100 can buy less and less and less. So you know, because of inflation, it's just like this rat scenario where you're losing a bit of your money every year. So your savings, wherever, wherever you put your savings, wherever you invest your savings, they need to increase just like your wages by the same rate that in, that prices are by inflation. Otherwise, you know, your savings are slowly uh, being eaten away. Another AI image uh, for you of a uh, of a boy cuddling um, our little our rat. OK, and then we have this video that you can play for your class. Um, that's a fun video that we found on YouTube where. They are uh, like a family thinks that, you know, uh, I think their grandfather, you know, buried some money in the attic or hid some money in the attic. And they had this treasure hunter find the money and the treasure hunter indeed, you know, finds uh, finds some money, finds forty six thousand dollars. That was hidden up there in 1950. And OK, so great. Found, they found forty six thousand dollars now. But if we think about this in terms of inflation, that forty six thousand dollars 
in purchasing terms at $46,000 today that the, that the heirs will get, that $46,000 would have been worth the equivalent of $550,000 today in terms of purchasing power. So it's lost over 90% of its value. You know, the real treasure was the other thing that the heirs inherited, which was the house where the money was in. So that house was valued at roughly ten thousand uh, dollars. Sorry, ten thousand dollars and roughly one hundred and ten thousand dollars in in today's dollars. And now the median home value in Massachusetts is almost six hundred thousand. So the house that they inherited since that time period, where the cash was buried in the attic or hidden in the attic, the house, the container of the cow, the cash has gone up by five hundred percent, where the cash itself has lost ninety percent of of the value. And what we're trying to illustrate here is like you need to put your money somewhere where it will retain its value. Real estate, whatever, stocks, bonds. We're not going to give investment advice. This is not a whatever the disclaimer. Don't take this for investment advice. We're just saying like your savings, if you just keep it in cash, inflation is going to eat away at its value. Right. And so this this slide is sort of summing up um, that, um, uh, uh, that, sent, that sentiment. Okay. Borrowers and lenders, which is the most tricky of these concepts. We obviously have borrowers, we have lenders. We're going to go walk through this in the slide. We'll walk through this very simply. Again, maybe students don't understand this. Lenders lend borrowers money. Okay. That's like, you know, we have one group giving money to the other group, and the other group's going to pay it back later on with interest. The reason why a lender would do this is you're going to get a little extra on top. Okay. So if the interest rate is 10% in our example, and you borrowed $100, you got to pay back $110. And if you're the lender, you're going to get back $110. This is the interest rate. Again, we assume you know this, we assume the students know this, but just to go through it so everyone's on the same page. All right, so you get back $110 if you're the lender. That's why you would let somebody borrow your $100 because you're going to get back uh, more. And so again, you could think of the interest rate as the price of um, borrowing. But inflation really complicates this uh, this relationship because you know what if you you get back your hundred ten dollars you lend a hundred dollars you get back hundred ten dollars but if inflation was really bad that year your hundred and ten dollars can actually buy less than the hundred dollars you lent out so you lost money in this whole um, this whole uh, 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 this whole transaction all right and so you know. You may get a nominal interest rate of 10%, but if inflation is higher than that, you actually lost money. And so we have um, a video from uh, from us at MRU um, that we made sort of going through, you know, lending, borrowing and lending in detail. And so you want to play that video and then, you know, pause at the appointed points to um, ask, uh, ask, ask questions. Okay. So you have all these all these questions to ask, and you could watch the video. All right, and so that basically we've taught wages, we've taught saving, and we've taught borrowing and lending. And now we have another video to play that's more of an interactive video where um, you're gonna your students are gonna be presented. Wait. So the video will give you like a scenario that you have to figure out what should I do in this scenario. So you don't necessarily want to hop back to the slides for these videos, for the questions. Uh, you could just keep it on the video since it has like the built-in little little pauses. So for example, in this scenario, in the past two years, inflation has been 0%. Is it a good time to borrow from your from the bank? So you can ask your students, okay, would you like to be a borrower here? Would you like to be a lender? What are you going to do in this real life historical um, scenario? And then there's three of these. And you'll know when to pause the video because, you know, this basically this little ticker uh, will uh, will come up. OK, so that's sort of like a final activity or this video is a final activity for uh, for this uh, for this lesson. And we move on to the exit ticket, which gives students another scenario, the scenario that happened in 2020 where. All right. Would you like your wages to go up by 2 percent or do you want your wages pegged to inflation? Of course, we all lived through this, so we know that inflation was very high, and so you'd want your wages pegged to uh, inflation. And so we have all these these headlines that we grab that sort of illustrate, you know, wages not keeping up with with inflation. And then after this lesson, 
Of course, we have the inflation assessments. We have like an actual test for you. You could use whatever questions you want or use the whole test. But we also have sort of a final uh, interactive practice. So we have a final interactive practice where students can get more scenarios and they sort of have to guess what inflation is going to be based on the money supply. So it ties in lessons from uh, 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 day three. And it has a bunch of different scenarios and you have to pick what you're going to do. And it, the interactive keeps track of your balance. Did you win or did you lose? And so you can use that interactive called the winners and losers of inflation. And that interactive can sort of also serve as sort of like a capstone to this six day, uh, six day uh, unit plan. Okay. All right. That's it for um, the videos. I'll see you uh, maybe in the next unit plan, hopefully. If you have any feedback, though, you can email me, matt at mru.org or support at mru. If you've made it this far uh, and you don't already have the inflation unit plan, there should be a link on screen. You can click that and get our uh, inflation unit plan. 